Okay, today we are playing a game on Hollywood. We are playing Genji the entire way through, and this is actually a quick play game. Uh, and boy, does it show from minute one, because look at all this right here. Mmm. Genji, Widow, Sombra combo. And then everybody else being very sober, very serious. Reinhardt, Lucio, and Anna. This is the time to break out the fucking Orisa. And yet he passes up the opportunity to play Reinhardt. Come on, man. I play Reinhardt. I know how it is. You're desperate to play something different. So, anyway. Let's start the game. Something very interesting is going to happen immediately. Because we're going to come out this door. Right? And we're going to be like, okay. Wait, who's shooting at me? Oh, fuck, it's Mercy! I don't know why. You know? Now we're gonna follow this Anna around for a while, trying to get healed. Um, so we're playing Genji right now, basically, is the moral of the story. Um, and Anna, she doesn't want the ult charge, that's fine. We'll give Sombra the ult charge instead by picking up her hacked med kit. So, anyway... Now, back to business. So, we immediately see that they have a May and a Symmetra, so this is going to make things slightly difficult for us. Um, they also are going to get a Winston later on, so boy, is it going to be a fun game to play Genji in. So, but, we just dash in immediately, and we can't quite secure the kill on anybody. Oh no, Winston's here as well. That's, we, they get a Winston later, they already have a Winston, so, you know. Uh, when you dash in... You've got to be real sure that you're going to kill somebody, and we don't kill somebody. We get really close to killing this May, but we kind of back off, because we're like, oh, fuck, May and Symmetra, oh, God. So we don't reset the dash, and we're just going to get slowly tased to death by uh, Winston, and it's going to feel pretty bad. When you dash in, you've got to kill somebody, or you've got to be pretty certain that you're going to kill somebody. Because the thing with Genji is, Genji has to use his mobility to go in and kill people. So you have to be pretty sure you're going to kill them when you dash in. I'm not saying you have to kill them with the dash, but you have to know within the next couple of seconds that you're going to kill the person. Because then you have to get out again. And we don't actually secure a kill, so we don't get to get out again. Um, we also dash in without really knowing if anybody is low HP. Which is generally not good because, yeah, you gotta be pretty sure you're gonna kill somebody. Dashing in on like a May and a Symmetra that we don't know how healthy they are exactly, pretty risky. And we don't get away with it. They also have a Genji, which is gonna be, which is, you know, a little bit awkward. We end up dashing and not getting the kill on him or even an assist, so we have to get, have the dash go on cooldown, but we've managed to kill the May. And now we're going to throw some shurikens into Winston's ass because he's the only person currently around since the rest of the team has actually been winning the fight in our absence. Got a tracer dashing up right here. We actually managed to kill the tracer and we're probably more surprised about it than anybody else, really. I would have been. So we've almost got Dragon Blade, but they're running away right now so we don't need to use the Dragon Blade. May's come in to contest the point. She's not long for this world. Everyone's pointing their guns at her. Uh... Not not the correct way to do things right there, because, I mean, so we just line up on her, and we dash immediately. You want to throw these shurikens in first before you dash, because we got to try and kill this person as quickly as possible to reset the dash, and basically you'd have a higher percentage chance of doing that if you throw the shurikens first, but that was probably a mechanical thing rather than anything else. Um, wouldn't recommend trying to deflect the Winston right here, because... Honestly, like, you can just walk under the Winston like we do exactly there. It's going to be difficult for this Winston to actually, like, get on you and start hitting you in Primal Rage again. And he, in fact, just jumps right over us. If he, like, pins you in the corner or starts hitting you or you get closer to dying, that would be the time to deflect. But just the Primal Rage Winston who's not actually in range of you and you're not near any corner, it's going to be difficult for him to actually close the gap and start hitting you. So a bit of an overreaction right there. Um, so it's pretty tempting to use the Dragon Blade right now, and this is why I can't be trusted with playing Genji, because I'm pretty sure I'd use the Dragon Blade right now, and I'm pretty sure I would die shortly afterwards. Um, but we're very low HP right now, and there's all these people that don't need to aim at us nearby, so it wouldn't be the best time. And we end up getting iced by May before we can get out. Really, we don't want to be continuing to go in at this point, because going in when you're this low HP is pretty risky. 
uh because this all happens you know we have this thing with winston i've gone back too far but the video didn't quite want to load again uh we're going in at just over half hp then we go in and we're below half hp again once you kill the symmetra this is the time to get out basically and this is not the best way to get out because we're cutting across big open space you could poke your root face into the cafe behind you to see if the little health kit is in there, though it probably isn't. But you don't want to dash this way to try and get out because you're just dashing out into open space. You'd be better off dashing behind the building and trying to get to the big HP kit in the alleyway instead. Because then you dash into cover rather than out into the open and then you have to just try and get back to your team. You don't get back to the team. Feels bad, man. Um, well, you do, but you get ice just before you get to safety, which feels bad, so... Uh, you got to kind of figure out how you're going to get out once you go in. Um, this is a thing with um, people who play flankers. They're like, all right, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to make plays. You got to know what play you're going to make and then you, you got to know how what play you're going to make. You got to know how you're going to do it and then you got to know how you're going to get out and you got to know how you're going to get out if it doesn't go right. So, and like Genji has to use his mobility to go in. He's not like Tracer or Reaper where they can just like recall out or Wraith form out. Genji has to actually like get a kill to reset his mobility. So you've got to kind of plan it out. You don't really like, you know, like you got to basically be like, all right, on Hollywood, where are the health kits? Where, where should I try and retreat to if I end up in trouble? And the answer is not usually into the open space. It's usually in here to try and get this health kit over here backwards to try and get the health kit back there just into the hallway up the staircase to try and get out of line of sight basically you want to get like out of line of sight into a health kit as quickly as possible so you gotta just like have it in your mind where you're gonna try and retreat to if things go bad basically so we managed to kill this tracer which is pretty amazing honestly she just kind of let us kill her so that was very convenient for us and they've lost this point but they're still fighting over it not generally advisable. <clears throat> so, we're now on the street phase of Hollywood. This is a pretty good place to be playing a flanker, particularly Genji, because there's lots of places to get around behind people, and Genji can come up and, t and contest people on the rooftops, which is pretty important during the street phase of Hollywood. They're all coming out of the spawn right now, so there isn't very terribly much for us to do. Um, we hang really far back right now. I try and get over to the other rooftop because we can see the enemy team with the infrasight, so we know nobody's going to see us get across there, and we might be able to sneak up on somebody. Well, I mean, like, this is clearly a quick play game because, like, look what their team has become at this point. But in most circumstances, we assume they aren't running complete fucking nonsense as their team comp, and we assume they have, like, a support or two. So I try and get across this rooftop while I know they're not coming so that I can just try and hang out closer to their back line and then maybe pop out and kill like a theoretical mercy that they would have if they weren't being silly. Um, but this is quick play, so what can you expect, right? So we, uh, we've decided that we want to try and kill the Symmetra and doesn't quite work out. We try to dash away, bonk our head off the roof, not very ninja-like of us, and we end up getting killed by Symmetra. Pretty risky to try and take on a Symmetra as Genji. You've got to be pretty confident that you're going to kill her. Um, generally wouldn't advise trying to pick a fight with a Symmetra if possible. Um, the enemy team is a little difficult for us to work with right now because it's like two flankers. We don't really want to try and fight them because that's more effort than it's worth. We don't really want to fight Winston because it's like we can get away from Winston. Like if you know what you're doing, Winston isn't going to kill you, but we're not really going to kill Winston. Symmetra we can kill, but we have to be pretty confident in, so it basically leaves us with, like, May and Bastion to try and bully around. May has to actually aim, and you can, as long as you are just, like, you play it correctly and don't just, like, get in May's face while she's, like, full HP, she won't freeze you and she won't kill you. Um, people think May is, like, a super counter to Genji. Not really, because the if the Genji doesn't get too close to May, it's actually hard for the May Fucking phone, go away. It's hard for the May to actually kill you if you play it correctly. And, of course, we want to try and bully around Bastion as much as possible. So, we've written off this half of the team over here, and we're trying to focus on these two, if at all possible. Because we're playing a flanker, so we need to have, like, the uh, order of prioritization roughly in our mind on who we're trying to bully around. Uh, we also have Dragon Blade and we have an Ana, so hopefully we can combo that at some point. We don't, um, despite our best efforts. We're looking for the teleporter right now. We found the teleporter. Great, that's how you play Genji. You go and you find the teleporter and you break it. And there's 
They don't come back to protect it. There's no turrets there. It's as free as can be. So, and our team's starting to win the fight over here. We come over and we start trying to pick a fight with people that we don't really want to pick a fight with. And, you know, we, we end up fighting um, Winston, Symmetra, and May was nearby as well. It, it, you don't want to go in. Like, you can try and, like, let, like, harass them with your left click from far away, but you don't want to get close to these people because high risk of dying. Um... Staying alive is a pretty high priority. I mean, in general, staying alive is a very high priority for all heroes, but like a flanker, it's very important you don't die. Because it doesn't matter how much pressure you're applying, if you die, it's all immediately relieved. So you have to be careful about like over committing into people that can kill you. So their Kenji is coming in with the Dragon Blade right now. Anna managed to sleep dart him with like one hit point left, and that Anna was definitely like Easy. Not even close. Never a doubt in my mind. Now we end up killing the Genji with his Dragon Blade, so that's great. We were trying to deflect right there, but our deflect was not off cooldown just yet, so we end up getting zapped in the face. Um, we see the Tracer over here. Don't use your dash like this. If you don't think you can kill something in the near future, don't use your dash, basically. We end up killing this Tracer and resetting the dash, but you don't usually want to just use it to close distance like that. You want to have reasonable security that you're going to kill somebody shortly afterwards so you can reset it. Because if Genji's dash doesn't get reset, he typically dies not too long afterwards. So we are trying to communicate that we want this nano boost. We see Bastion over here in some bad times. We're going to come up and we're going to try and bully him. Deflect in. He stops shooting. Widowmaker kills him. Great. Awesome. It all works out. So we're going around with the Ana, and we do exactly what we want to try and do to get the nano boost but it looks like Anna just barely loses line of sight to us but then she doesn't do it anyway maybe because she's like oh fuck he's already lost some of the duration because we like come back and we like look and we're like you know nano boost me looks like she must she must have lost sight like right as we went in basically which feels bad man <coughs> so but here's the thing with the dragon blade as well you've got to know what you're gonna do sorry I'm fucking dying suddenly excuse, excuse me one moment Hmm. Just spontaneously dying. Don't don't worry about it. That's gonna fall. There we go. Um, so you gotta know what you're gonna do with the dragon blade. So the plan right now, based on how we dragon blade right here, because we get a brief look at everybody in Infrasight, we're going in on their two tanks right now because they're the ones closest to us, and we're trying to get boosted by the Anna. We do it like all great. You dash into the air. You draw the nano. Draw out the dragon blade which is how you typically want to engage as Genji, but, you know. Um, if I'm to nitpick, though, you do dash pretty far away from them, because the idea is you dash over the enemy team with the initial dash and then draw the Dragon Blade so that you can, like, look at them as you're falling down as well. And then you're just, like, in range to start cutting people. You're, like, an extra dash away from them when you actually draw the Dragon Blade. And that's a little bit more risky, because the idea is hopefully... Um, if Nana, Anna Nano boosts you, you can left click dash and that'll kill somebody right there. If you have to then, if you have to dash, draw the blade and then dash again to get to them, you can't really do that. You have to actually cut people, which I mean, if you're nano blade, it is still probably going to happen, but it's a, you know, it's a slight inefficiency thing. So we come in, we start cutting the tanks. These are not really the people we want to be cutting. This is what I'm saying again. You got to have it all kind of worked out. And basically the one we end up focusing down is like Orissa and Winston, which are not really who we're looking for. So it doesn't seem like how we were going to use the Dragon Blade was very carefully thought out. It seems like we were just like, I've got the Dragon Blade, I'm going to go make Dragon Blade plays. But you got to plan it out, you got to know, you've got to be like, there's going to be a pretty sick deflect coming up here. But like, when you're going in with the Dragon Blade, you've got to know, right, I'm going to go for that one, then I'm going to go for that one, then I'm going to go for that one, and then we're just going to see what happens at that point. Like, you usually don't have every single step laid out, but you've got to be like, all right, I'm going to go in, I'm going to get the Mercy, then I'm going to dash over here with the reset and get the Soldier, then I'm going to dash over here and try and get this person. It seems like the play there was kind of just, I'm going to go in with the da Dragon Blade and cut people. Got to try and plan it out a little bit more than that. That's like the biggest issue I find people have when they're playing flankers, is they don't really plan out what they're going to do very carefully. They're just like, I'm going to go in and make the plays. Well, you got to know how you're going to make the plays. So, Bastion's over here in tank form. Oh, direct hit with the deflect right there. 
and we decide we're going to keep going in, but we miss it. On, we miss the dash on him. You know, we could have killed him right there, but we don't quite execute it properly. I mean, well, okay, we might not have killed him because the damage reduction might have actually just carried him through that at the end right there. Um, but we could have theoretically killed him. We just didn't quite execute it properly, which happens. Um, this is the thing with Genji as well. You got, you could know, you can know exactly what you're gonna do, but you do have to still be able to like execute it. Genji's got a pretty like precise way to execute him in most cases. Um, so sometimes you're you're gonna know exactly what you need to do, but you're gonna just fail to execute it properly. You know, this happens with flanking heroes. So we're coming over here to bully the Genji. We use our dash not too well because we use it when he's pretty high HP and we don't manage to secure the kill on him. Like, we can't see what HP he's at just yet, because we haven't actually hit him, and we just dash straight through him. Like, he could be full HP right now. We could just, like, do 50 damage to him and not do anything afterwards. Um, he wasn't quite at full HP, but he does manage to start getting away from us. We kill him in the end, just before he can slip out the doorway. But again, you gotta be pretty sure you're gonna kill somebody within a second or two of actually dashing through them. So we see a Mei over here. She's got her ultimate, but she doesn't actually use the ultimate. I'm not sure if she was still hacked or not right there, but whatever. Or if she just decided she shouldn't use it, which is probably correct, given how things were going at that point. Um, so, we almost have Dragon Blade built up again. Again, we're dashing through this Winston. We don't know how healthy he is, but he's probably pretty healthy because he's playing Winston. So we don't really want to use our dash like that, because that's the kind of thing that can get you killed if you don't get the reset. Um, we almost got Dragon Blade right now. Very risky maneuver, uh, to just walk up to people, like, deflecting at them, especially when they don't necessarily need to shoot any projectiles at you. Wouldn't recommend that one, and indeed it doesn't really pay off. In general, the walking at somebody deflecting play doesn't typically work out. Because if the person knows what they're doing, they'll just wait for you to stop deflecting. Cut, like... So many Genji players are like, oh, they're just gonna, like, they're gonna cut, they come out in front of the McCree that's high nooning, and they're like, I'm gonna deflect right in your face, and the McCree's like, what the fuck is this shit? What are you doing? And then you kill him. You know, it's the, I mean, this is obviously a much less severe example than that one, but generally walking at somebody just deflecting at them doesn't really pay off. You kind of, you know, like, most people are gonna be expecting you to deflect, so you have to try and be a little bit more creative with it. And, like, usually there's, like, a specific thing for each matchup that you're trying to deflect. Like, if you're fighting a Widowmaker, you're trying to deflect the mine back at her if you can, because then it'll actually become your mine and it'll do damage to her. If you're trying to fight a soldier, you're trying to deflect the Helix Rocket back at him, because then he can't kill you, but you'll probably kill him if you hit him with the Helix Rocket. You gotta kind of know, you gotta try and be, like, careful with deflect, because it's a pretty important cooldown, and it's a fairly long cooldown. I mean, it's only like seven seconds, but considering you're probably in the person's face fighting them, seven seconds is a pretty fucking long time. Um, so try not to do the just like walk out deflect play. So, there again, she's coming around out here. We've got Dragon Blade built up right now, but now is going to be an awkward time to use it because everyone's kind of out in the open. This is, a, this is very awkward for us to play Genji against this team because there are a lot of things we don't really want to fight. Um, like right now, we're trying to fight the Symmetra. We do get away from the Symmetra. Um, something I will say is when you get, you don't want to just, like, a lot of Genjis, they rely on the right click. When you're really close to somebody, the right click's better, but once you get to sort of this range, you want to try and left click the person instead. And I know that's harder to hit, but, like, just doing the fan at them from that kind of range is not very effective because you're only going to do, like, a little bit of damage to them. And you kind of, you know, if you just left click into them, you'll do a lot more. Um, so, we got Mei over here, she comes out, she immediately pops her ultimate, we dash away, probably didn't need to dash away, I think you could have just walked out of that one, or at least tried to before committing to using your dash. Um, we could have even considered, we actually could have probably dashed through that Mei and killed her right there, upon reflection, because she's actually fairly low HP when we use the dash. And she can't cryo-freeze again. Yeah, the play there was probably actually dash through the Mei and try to kill her, because she does go very low HP. Um... Otherwise, though, you could have tried to just, like, walk out of the blizzard and then dash if you think you're going to get frozen. We just sort of immediately react like I'm going to get out of the blizzard. Could have played it a little bit cooler. <laughs> cool, because it's blizzard. You get it? 
so we've got Dragon Blade right now, and we're trying to basically look for an opportunity to play, make a play with it. I fucking love that they did this. Like, this right here, this is so fucking sick that you can see Sombra's hacked health kits through walls. It's a shame nobody's actually allowed to play Sombra, or your team will fucking throw the game for you. It's so fucking sick. I'm gonna rant right, right in the middle. I'm gonna rant right now, and you're gonna listen to it, okay? Because I'm upset, so everybody else has to be upset with me. When Anna came out, she was, like, strong on release, right? She was slightly overpowered on release, and then people... There was, she still had the stigma attached to her, because people were like, Oh, it's a fucking sniper. Oh, terrible. Oh, fucking Widowmaker. But the Hanzo players are going to play her and be bad. Oh, boo. So then the people didn't play Anna, and they buffed Anna more to encourage people to play her. And then everybody went, Damn, Anna's actually fucking overpowered as hell, isn't she? Damn, we actually realize she's, like, the best hero in the game. The exact opposite happened with Sombra and Orisa is happening with as well, where they've been released on the lower side of power. They were like slightly underpowered on release, and now they've been buffed up to being pretty reasonable. I've, well, Orisa not so much, but I think she's going to follow this same trajectory with Sombra. Sombra was like slightly underpowered on release. They've buffed her up now, but people have made this connection in their mind. Release Sombra is exactly the same as present Sombra, so present Sombra is also fucking bad. And so, consequently, where nobody is allowed to fucking play Sombra still. And, you know, we... So little science has been done because Sombra's a really weird hero, but we have not actually figured out what she's really, really good at yet. Because if you try and pick Sombra, your team will throw the game for you. Because they're, oh, fucking troll pick Sombra. And Orisa is, like, following the same trajectory. Slightly less so because she's a tank hero, which people are slightly, give more leeway to for some reason. But I think it's going to follow a similar trajectory to Sombra. So I'm very upset about that. And like, look at this. This is so nice. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. This is, like, a this is a full health kit right here that's going to respawn in, like, three seconds. That's absolutely fucking insane. Problem is also that Sombra is in the wrong fucking tree, honestly, because people see offense and they're like, oh, so she's basically Tracer. No, she doesn't do any damage. Sombra's like more of a support than anything else. It's really weird. But that's enough of me complaining about heroes, the way they're categorized, and the community's reaction to them. I'm a very opinionated person. I don't know if that comes across. So, Genji, right? Genji. <laughs> so, we find Hanzo over here. We're going to bully the Hanzo around. We execute all of that pretty well but unfortunately he manages to get a shot in on us and then uh with ha, almost said widow winston very different hero comes in and just finishes us off afterwards but we executed it pretty well it's just he got a shot in on us and he killed us and we got killed before we could actually get away with the crime so it feels bad so we've deduced now that the enemy teleporter is behind our spawn um, which is an unusual tactic, certainly. And the enemy team, I bet when they walked through that teleporter and came out fucking, like, in the center of the street, they were like, well, fucking hell, right? Fucking fuck me, I guess. Uh, so we're gonna quickly stop to, like, type that this is happening. Yeah, uh, our, our spawn, our spawn. No fear. Yeah, you don't need to go quite that far with it. Like, I think just, com like, just the, the tele TP is behind our spawn kind of conveys the idea. I don't think you need to go that far with it, but whatever. I don't even care if you talk to people personally. So we're really low HP right now. Um, again, we're just trying try to kill the mate with the deflect, but she doesn't, she, um, cryo freezes. We don't quite get it in. Unfortunate. We just missed the health kit and we're like, fuck, gotta go back for the health kit. And so I'm pretty sure we're going to use the Dragon Blade in the near future because we changed to Reaper before this game ends. So sound barrier is happening right now. Again, we're just dashing in. We don't really seem like we have this planned out. We just kind of dash in because you kind of look around the corner, dash in, and you're like, all right, now I'm just going to cut the first person I find. And I gather I didn't have a lot of warning that the sound barrier was going to happen. But generally, when you go in with a Dragon Blade and you don't know what you're going to do with the Dragon Blade when you get there, this is what happens, where it comes out being kind of meh, right? Especially, the enemy team is kind of hard for us to kill as well. They're generally really tanky. Even Mei is, like, tanky, right? So, it's a little bit awkward for us as Genji. We're about to change to Reaper, though, when we die, so... Um, which is, you know, a good switch, given their team comp. First, though, we find the shield generator. We're going to break the shield generator... 
Um, very nitpicky thing. Like, I don't think you're going to get punished for it in this situation, but very nitpicky thing. Try not to stand perfectly still while you're doing this, because imagine the enemy team knows what the fuck they're doing. And a McCree comes around the corner and he sees you doing that. He's going to be like, pop, pocket sand, pop. And you're going to be like, fuck, I didn't even get the shield generator. So try not to stand perfectly still. You make it way too easy uh, for people to kill you if they know what they're doing. So we find this Hanzo over here. Oh, deflect a little bit late, get shot, get shot by somebody else and die. Feels bad, man. Deflect just a little bit too late. Happens, feels bad. We got shot by the Hanzo and then the Urissa shot us. Um, yeah, so now we're going to change to Reaper. He kind of tricked me out because I thought we were going to go back and play Genji for a little while more. But no, we're going to change to Reaper. Um, so similar concept to Genji, but now we're basically just going in with not much time left. So we don't really have any time to figure things out. But we do know that the enemy team is pretty fucking sick to play Reaper against, generally speaking. Except for, like, Symmetra. Symmetra is really difficult for us to deal with. Um... But they've got a Winston and they've got an Arissa. If you can get on that Arissa, you'll fucking kill her, and there's basically nothing she can do about it. Winston, there's a little bit more, a little bit, he's a little bit more trouble if he knows what he's doing and he dances in and out of the bubble at you correctly. But generally, their team is pretty good to play Reaper against. However, we pop out and get immediately killed by Hanzo, who has got the bongo on him. Feels bad, man. Um, believe it or not, we're actually gonna, we're actually gonna win this. We're actually gonna win this game. I almost said this round, this game, because it's only a quick play game, so this is the only round. Um, so we see, uh, Lucio pop out right here, and we're pretty surprised about it. Um, try not to just walk at him in a straight line, because Lucio can actually kill you, and he becomes, like, we can kill you now, and he comes pretty close in this situation. Because he pops out, we're not really expecting it. But then we just kind of walk at him in a really straight line. Like, strafe it up a little bit, you know. Bare minimum, like, crouch and uncrouch as you walk up to him a little bit, right? Like, don't make it quite so easy for him. We're like, fuck, gotta touch the point, teleport up to the point, die immediately. Not exactly an unexpected result. But we are in overtime right now, so needs must and all that. Uh, Reinhardt's over here being a fucking Goliath and saving the day with help from Anna. Um, and we are actually going to get back again. We're Wraith Forming to get there quicker, because it is a very slight speed boost. And we're going to teleport in, and we're just basically going to shoot the first people that we see, because right now they're in the middle of just, like, get back as quickly as possible. Mm, just get right up in that Orisa's face and shoot her. Feels good. We're focusing down the Winston now, which is good. We're playing Reaper. Our top priority is tanks, if possible. Well, I mean, okay, our top priority is technically supports, but if you're just in the middle of a melee, your priority is usually the tanks. May's frozen, so we adjust. We try to kill the Tracer in the meantime. Doesn't work out, un not unexpectedly, but we couldn't be killing the May in the meantime, so it's fine. Managed to get a nice shot in on the soldier and kill him, and, you know, we're basically... We've won the round at this point. We just kind of have to, like, go through the ceremony of killing all these people that are coming up to touch it. Focus down this Orisa. Didn't actually focus the Orisa down to death. Damn, Arissa's died now. Your t tanks are your priority. You've got to make sure that Arissa actually dies. But you probably thought she did actually die and then just kind of moved on. We've got Death Blossom built up and we get to win the game. Woo! Feels good, man. Um, so, it all worked out. Um, I generally try to avoid, like, switching. Like, it would be better if you switched advice, but... Genji was not really the play. Like, it would have been a lot easier if we changed to Reaper early on. But at the start of this game, you were like, I don't want to be a good player today. And I was like, I understand. <laughs> I know how it feels. So I'm not going to judge you for it either. This is unsurprisingly the play of the game. And I'm the guy that has to play Reinhardt. I didn't... You know, the funny thing is... The funny thing is that I've ended up... That's, that's pretty good for Reinhardt. Um, that's pretty good for sound barriers, actually. The funny thing is that when this get before this game came out, I was like, I'm gonna be a tracer main. I'm gonna play tracer, and I'm gonna be the best at tracer. And now, I've got like, I've played more time as Reinhardt collective, as like more time on Reinhardt than like every other hero in the game collectively. Because somebody has to play Reinhardt, and I'm just like, oh god, fine, I'll play Reinhardt. And now it's just, it's just what I do. It's just what I've become. I was, I was gonna play the Tracer. I was gonna be the best at Tracer. I was like, I'm English as well. It's perfect. I'll be, I'll be the best mechanics. Woo! And that didn't, 
That didn't happen at all. Now I play Reinhardt instead. Exact opposite end of the spectrum. Um, so, the thing that stands out to me the most from this game, and granted, this is a quick play game, so, like, there's nonsense happening. I get it. But, like, the biggest thing that stands out to me in this game is generally not really, it doesn't seem like you're really planning out what you're gonna do as Genji. And when you're playing a flanker, you kind of have to plan out what you're gonna do. You have to know who you're gonna, you have to know what you're trying to do, you have to know how you're gonna do it, and then you have to know what, how you're gonna get out after you've done it. And then you have to also know what you're going to do if something goes wrong. I'm not saying you need to have, like, a fucking, like, heist map with all, like, the steps laid out and everything like that. But you need to know roughly, like, all right, I they look at their team and, like, I'm, I'm trying to kill their mercy. So I'm going to go around the back, like, assume we're on, like, Volskaya, right? First point. Like, okay, I'm going to go around the left-hand side over the docks, and then I'm going to come up behind them, and I'm going to find the mercy, and I'm going to try and kill the mercy. I'm going to you know, get in, I'm going to do the dance, I'm going to try and get her a little bit from far away, then I'm going to close the distance, dash through her, kill her, and then I'm going to dash off to, like, the large health kit, and disappear, like, into the buildings. And if they turn around and try to focus me, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to dash into, like, the hallway windows, and then I'm going to just, like, disappear over to the large health kit out of their line of sight. You know, just roughly what you're trying to do, roughly how you're going to do it, and then roughly how you're going to get out if it goes well and if it doesn't go well. Um, now, you don't need to have it super planned out, but you need to know roughly what you're going to do. Um... And that's why the biggest, everything else kind of ties into that as well, because I was gonna, then I was gonna be like Dragon Blade, but I was like, I'm basically gonna repeat the last couple of sentences again if I deal with that one. Um, what I will go with is using your dash though, because we use it pretty frivolously. Um, we don't use it like super frivolously, but we use it fairly frivolously. We basically just use it for damage. You have to be pretty certain that you're going to kill somebody when you use the dash. And you, you don't need to kill the person with the dash, but you need to know that like, I'm going to dash through this person and then I'm going to kill them within a second or two of dashing through them, reset it, and then just disappear. Because Genji has to use his mobility to go in and actually kill people, so you have to be able to make, you have to, be pretty certain you're going to reset that mobility, or you're just going to die. So, that's also a very important aspect of playing Genji. Um, deflect kind of similarly. You're going to be. You've got a. You've got. This is again kind of planning. You basically need to know roughly what you're going to do with deflect. And like sometimes you use it to make like cut clutch plays and all that. But usually there's like something you're trying to deflect in the matchup. Like, if you're trying to execute, like, a soldier, you're trying to deflect the Helix Rocket. If you're trying to fight a, get a McCree, you're trying to deflect the Flashbang. You know, that kind of thing. And, but we kind of, we don't really, we just kind of, like, use it randomly. Granted, there's not a lot for us to deflect in this game, but we kind of just sort of use it randomly when we feel like we should. Um... Like, you need to know roughly what you're going to do with it. And, like, it's kind of hard in this game, but, like, you know, it's a similar thing. You kind of need to know roughly what you're trying to do with Deflect as well. With Room for Air, because sometimes you're going to need to use it to, like, save, get yourself out of a situation as well. But roughly what you're going to do with it. Um, so, those are the things that stood out to me the most in this game. Thank you very much for watching. If you did, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to answer. And I hope you found the video helpful.